Hey look, women's basketball, and that looks like Jackie McFarlane. Yeah, look at her sinking that shot. Oh, men's basketball. The basketball show, there's lots of it. There's Richard <laughs> Rowe throwing down. Yeah, oh, and lacrosse, there's some lacrosse. Lacrosse moving across the nation, exploding on the scene in, in Colorado. Oh, definitely. And is that Ralphie? That looks like Ralphie, and he's running! Run, Ralphie! Sports bag, no! Hello and welcome to this week's edition of CU Sports Mag. I'm Heather Morba, sitting alongside Russell Cunningham. And we have a lot of stuff to do tonight. Let's yes, just get right do. into it. <laughs> Wednesday the evening, the Colorado women's basketball team played their final game of the season against Missouri. Did the seniors take their last walk on the Coors Event Center with a victory? Let's take a look at those highlights. Roll them, Thomas. Okay, here we go. They're warming up. Courtney Dow works it down to Jackie McFarlane, and she knocks down the layup. We'll see a lot more of Jackie where that came from. It's the Jackie McFarlane show for the most part. All right, now we have Alyssa Hollins, and she knocks down the J. She had 16 points, and CU is not, cut the lead there. Mizzou cut the lead to three, and Coach McCollum Miller is not happy. More great defense with Kara Richards there. She played 20 minutes and provided a spark from the bench, and Chip is still. Now, here we go. Whitney Houston driving the lane, passes out to Jackie McFarlane of all people, knocks down the three. She was one from three from the line, behind the line, and that was the boost that Colorado needed. Now more traditional McFarlane play. On the low post, she knocks it down. She had 25 and 16 boards this game. An amazing game for senior day, and Coach McConnell Miller is a little less apprehensive. Now, here we go. Good defense causes offense. Bianca Smith with the tip. Whitney Houston with the layup. She is very, 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 very fast, and she and the quickest in the Big 12 by some counts. Here we go now. Britney Spears is wearing the shoes saying Jackie on them for a ref uh, homage to Jackie McFarlane, who's obviously graduating this year. H Hannah Skilden with the fadeaway J knocks it down, and I think we'll see a little more of Hannah in a couple of seconds, maybe. I'm predicting the future. Mm, and Susie Powers working the ball around. Oh, look, it's Hannah Skilden. She knocks down a three. She had 11 points for the game, and she's a junior. She'll be back next year. Another freshman, Britney Spears, she drives the lane and has the contested J, and the, her teammates Susie Powers and Jackie McFarlane are excited for the team. Jackie McFarlane and Sue Powers have left the Seat Coors Event Center for the last time. That's it. They're seniors. They're done with CU. Now, the CU won 63-47, and Jackie McFarlane had her double-double and her 1,000th career rebound. Let's take a look at what Coach McConnell Miller had to say after the game. Sure why the execution was the way it was tonight. It just offensively was a, a, a pretty poor offensive night. And, you know, I, I credit Missouri. You know, obviously we rebounded the ball well, but when you miss as many shots as you do, you know, hopefully you're going to get some rebounds. But uh, we did have a lot of defensive rebounds, some good stops, played a lot of players, but uh, we, we just had a lot of challenges on the offensive end. When you think of an athlete who's one of CU's best, who comes to mind? Marcus Hall? Jordan Dizon, Hugh Charles. None of these players have put up numbers quite like senior women's basketball player Jackie McFarland. In her final game at the Coors Event Center, she recorded, she recorded a double-double and her 1,000th career rebound. For that performance and her amazing career, we have made Jackie McFarland CU Sports Mag's Athlete of the Week. I think we're a team that really feeds off three-pointers, big plays like that. And um, maybe that was just a little kick in the pants that we needed to, to really get going. You know, this, they're, the numbers don't really mean as much. Um, it's more so when you, when you look at the people that have um, reached those numbers. There's not a lot of people that reach 1,000 rebounds. And when I look and see the list of people that have, it's just amazing to me that I could even be like, you know, in, in the same category as them. And you look at the rebounding charts and see the people that I've passed. It's, I think that's the most humbling. Really, um, I'm hoping to get drafted um, for the WNBA and go to the league, try out, and see how that goes in the summer. The number one thing I really want to do is uh, go overseas and play for a year, and I think that's a definite possibility for me. I'm Jackie McFarland, CU Sports Mag Athlete of the Week. Jackie McFarland's great game on Wednesday was to make up for her lackluster one last Sunday, where she only accumulated 13 points in the Buffs' 63-55 loss to rival Nebraska Cornhuskers. The Buffs got into early foul trouble and Nebraska took full advantage, blowing the game wide open with a 29-17 lead. 
CU would come back late in the half and cut the Husker lead only to seven. The Buffs would try it and battle back, but in the end, the Cornhuskers proved to be too much, defeating CU 63 to 55. Nebraska's Kelsey Griffin had a monster game, scoring 26 points and 10 rebounds, while Colorado freshman Brittany Spears finished with 14 points and 11 rebounds. The women's basketball team will take on Iowa State on Tuesday as part of the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, Missouri. Richard Roby is on his way to becoming the third player excuse me, in Colorado history to lead the team in scoring in all four years that he's played. In doing so, Roby was named to the National Association of Basketball's second team. In he might be Richard Roby's best season. He ha is shooting about 48% from the line and is averaging more than six rebounds a game, and both career highs for, for him. The, the funny thing is, is that Roby was named to the NABC's first team sophomore year. Earlier this week, Roby brought his team to Manhattan and tried to help them beat Kansas State. It is very difficult to win a basketball game when a team does not play hard for a full 40 minutes. This past Thursday night, the Colorado basketball team fell 78-72 to, to the Kansas State Wildcats for just that reason. K-State led the game 41-27 at halftime thanks to diaper dandy Richard or Michael Beasley, who finished with 33 points and 14 boards. The Buffs then made a furious rally with 45 points in the second half, but were too deep of a hole to dig themselves out. Marcus Hall had 22 points, with, and Richard Roby scored 15 after being held to one point in the ugly first half. Colorado closed out the regular season at Nebraska Sunday, hoping to complete a full 40 minutes of basketball. But before they did that, and before they lost to Kansas State, the team tried to catch Iowa State in the rankings. Check those uh, highlights out. Um, so Marcus Hall, he sinks this three from the outside, a career-high 31 points for him on this senior night. And here he goes again, stealing the rock, taking it all the way down and just laying it in nice and easy. Um, but, you know, we're going to shift over to defense. Corey Higgins took a leap of faith. Thankfully, it didn't end it in a concussion. That looked real painful. Oh, yeah. So the Iowa State passing game, you know, Russ, it's not so hot. Um, they actually like just handing it off to each other. Yeah, as you can see right there. But they'll sink this one from way outside. So Bizdelic has a little chat with Marcus Hall. Maybe about the weather, maybe about Iowa State. But back into the game, Deontay Gar is rejected. You know, Marcus King Stockton, he was on fire tonight. Because here he goes again, the second stuff of the game. That's two in a row. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, Iowa State, they'll get it back. But, oh, no, a third stuff. That's pretty big, pretty epic. Um, but Iowa State, they'll get it back, and Craig Bracken, he, he throws it down. And you know, here we go with Richard Roby with some fancy footwork. Um, he puts it in. He finished the game with 17 points. And maybe Iowa State um, just had some bad defense that night, or a big heart, but whatever the reason, they basically just let Richard Roby dunk right there. That's how Aaron Carter beat Shaq. That was dirty. But anyway, they, that kind of sealed the game. Um, so Colorado, they walked away with the W. And yes, we do thank the seniors for giving us a great four years. Uh, here's the final score, 67-55, Colorado victorious. Let's hear what the seniors had to say. I want to thank God because I've been through a lot of those teams over here back at home in Houston. Uh, my family and friends that supported me for five years now. Yeah, it was. It was a great win. Um, it's just proud to be a part of this part of this team. And uh we just got to keep playing like that every game with that intensity. Anytime you go into the basket, you're either going to get fouls or a good look at it. And, and it's, it's fun when you win, when you know you played your hardest. So here's the Big 12 men's basketball standings. Kansas way up at the top. Oklahoma at the bottom. Leading the call. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, you know, coming up, um, we have a story on some of the most dedicated athletes here at CU. And they don't even compete against other schools. Yeah. We'll stick around and we'll take a look at that. Takes a man to be a dad. 
Since 2005, Colorado has hired a new bat football coach, men's basketball coach, and women's basketball coach. This week, Sports Mag's Patrick Zichterman went onto the street to see how many students actually know these people are. Let, uh, let's have a look. Hi, this is Patrick Zichterman with CU Sports Mag, and I'm here in the UMC to see who can identify the various CU athletic coaches. Let's see how they do. Here we have a picture of head football coach Dan Hawkins. I have no idea who this guy is. So I see this guy, he probably coaches some CU team. He has this weird clause. This is Dan Hawkins, and he coaches our football team. He's uh, doing his impersonation of a dinosaur right there. Looks like he's doing one of his Zen master things where he's explaining his whole philosophy on life. He's talking about uh, the time he met the Loch Ness Monster. Call him the Hawk. And here's women's basketball coach Kathy McConnell Miller, Chip, and men's basketball coach Jeff Bzdelik. Uh, so Buffalo and some guy, I, I don't know who this guy is. We have a bear and we have a coach, so I presume that's something along the lines of football team maybe? Chip, he's the mascot. I don't know who the other chick is. She is just super excited. She can't believe that Jeff Bzdelik, like ex-Nuggets coach, is like right in front of her. Jeff Bzdelik. Showing some affection for Chip, having a good time doing it. Let me get in a feel of the breast there. <laughs> <laughs> Women's basketball coach, um, Catherine McConaughey Miller, I think, somewhere in that nature. There's Chip and what appears to be Anna Nicole Smith in the background. And this is head volleyball coach P.E. Ayu. This is a volleyball coach, I know that. Obviously, it's clearly says volleyball on the shirt, but... Uh... <laughs> I have no idea how to say his name. The volleyball coach, but I don't know his name. P-I-U? 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 Maybe? P-I-I-U? P-I-I-U? Apparently, CU students need a little more education on the coaching staff here. Either that, or the coaches need to socialize a little more. With CU Sports Mag, I'm Patrick Zichterman. Spring football is just around the corner, and since we are changing the clocks this weekend, football will be here before you know it. Sports Mag's Phil Milani reports. And his teammates out on the field playing with the big guys. But Wednesday afternoon, they were inside playing with the little guys. It is a lot of fun to be able to take time out of your busy week and come out and hang out with some kids. The team tries to give back to the community by helping out at schools. All 75 players are required to volunteer four hours a year, but many would like to do more. I wish I could do more, actually. I would like to be here like every weekend if I could, or every week. Uh, it's so much fun to be with these kids and you know, get to play with them. No problem at all. Players have a good time, but the feeling of giving back is why they do it. If I can take a little bit of time out of my day to hang out and make their day better, then uh, they definitely return the favor. At Cole Creek Elementary, the players aren't the only ones enjoying themselves. And I thought in my head that, oh my God, they're here. They're really famous. I've never seen them before. Community involvement is important to the team, and they sure did gain a whole lot of little fans here. Phil Milani, CU Sportsman. It is actually a requirement for all the players to complete some form of community service. If they don't, they are not allowed to play. As students here at CU, we would like to consider ourselves close with our loving mascot, Ralphie. But only a handful of people have the opportunity to run with her every football game. Ben Howell from News Team has the inside scoop on Ralphie Handlers. Here comes Ralphie. The most recognizable and unique mascot in collegiate sports is Ralphie. And the runners hanging on for dear life are the handlers. These Ralphie handlers go from start to finish with the Buffalo and do everything possible to avoid getting trampled. But Rookie of the Year John Graves tells us it's all worth it once you unleash her. The stadium's full, just everyone from Boulder for the 4th of July, so I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just holding on. He's like, all right, do this. Points tells me how to do it. I'm like, all right, cool. Opens up the gates and she goes out flying. And it was awesome. Really? It was so cool just to look up, see all the fans. Beyond there running with her, it was awesome. There's a lot more to it than just running with Ralphie. These student handlers try out every spring and there's usually around 15 applicants. They only accept about 12 people. 
five which are runners and the rest are spotters. The tryouts consist of a physical test and an interview with the past handlers. Once selected, they dedicate about 25 hours a week with weightlifting, training, and caring for the buffalo. The Ralphie handlers are considered a varsity athlete because of the time they put in. Gales Peterson, who oversees the program, says it takes many qualities to be a Ralphie handler. The any experience that you have with live animals. Uh, we have lots of kids who have rodeo experience or have been part of 4-H. Uh, they've been around horses and cattle. It's not a, a prerequisite, but it's definitely a benefit to them if they've had that kind of experience. Uh, what their GPA is, what year they are. Uh, we look for underclassmen so that they can have multiple years in the program. Here at CU, Ralphie's been around since 1934 where he made his first appearance at a CU football game. This year they introduced the newest member, Ralphie Five. Well, the new Buffalo means a lot more work because she's so young, but the handlers say it's all worth it. Ben Howell, News Team Boulder. Again, we'd like to thank News Team's Ben Howell for that look at CU's most unique varsity sport. So, <laughs> while football season is still a few months away, we look to the gridiron for our, this week's trivia question. The University of Colorado Athletic Hall of Fame was established in 1998. Yes, the first CU athlete ever inducted into the Hall of Fame, Byron Wizard White, who led the Buffs to an 8-0 record in 1937, is a famous alumni for what other reason? We'll have the ruling to this trivia question coming up later in the show. So, Heather, yeah. I know skiing's fun, but retro skiing has to be much better. Oh, I think I'll have to see this one for myself, Russ. We'll see. <laughs> you are 100% unadulterated energy. You have no choice but movement. You aren't acted on. You are action. You have the power to make the world a better place. You already know how to do it. Volunteer now for the American Red Cross. Call your local chapter for details. Last Wednesday, the Boulder High School men's basketball team took on George Washington in a 5A Sweet 16 at the Budweiser Event Center in Loveland, Colorado. The Panthers' hopes for a state championship were dashed as they squandered an early fourth quarter lead, falling to GW 51-46. George Washington capped a monumental comeback with junior Tony Adams hitting a game-winning three with 1.8 seconds left in regulation. The loss was even more devastating to this year's Boulder squad as 10 of their 11 current players are seniors and sophomore Kane Coulter will be the lone returnee to next year's Panthers squad. The CU men's placed 7th in, in the Big 12 Track and Field Championships in Lincoln, Nebraska. Last week, a 1-2-3-4 finish in the 5,000-meter run propelled the men's team to the first place of the first day of competition. But they slipped to 7th on the second day. Adam Selzman led the buffs, recording three personal bests in the 60-meter hurdles, pole vault, and the 1,000-meter run. Selzman finished 2nd in the 1,000-meter run and 13th overall out of 17 finalists. The women struggled placing 12th in a field of 12. Sarah Vaughn was the only buff on the women's team to advance to the set to the finals. The buffs will have one more chance to this weekend to qualify for the 2008 NCAA Track and Field Championships. The women's golf team finished 7th Tuesday at the San Jose State Spartan Invitational. The buffs improved by four strokes each round, and for the first time, all five CU golfers shot in the 70s, but it wasn't enough to move them up the leaderboard. Freshman Seth Freshman Stephanie Simich had her best college score and her first top 20 finish, taking 19th place. Right behind her was Dominique Pitalewski and in, 20, in 22nd and Julie Kim in 29th. The Buffs have a two-week break before they head to Oregon on March 24th. Coach Ann Kelly has said they have a couple of things to work on before the Invitational and is looking forward to using this time to do just that. The, seas the ski team was in Bozeman, Bozeman, Montana this week, participating in the 55th Annual NCAA Championships. The women team took a top two spots in the race. Senior Maria Gladsgard took the women's five-kilometer freestyle race. She holds the school record, in, in record individual win, count, in, count with 18 victories. She is also CU's 75th at NCAA Championship. Lika Palova also had a successful day, taking second place in an international 
controversial start. Aside from victories within the races, all American honorees were awarded to Glasgow and Pulova for their efforts. The men's skiers did not quite measure up to the women's, although. Freshman Jasper Olsen was close to the third place, CU's top performer. Uh, performer had a flat day, according to Coach Kramer, finishing in 11th place. Colorado currently holds first place with 32 points over Northern Michigan. There are, is only one more day of championships this Saturday, the 8th, and hopefully the Buffs will go home with the gold. Man, that's quite a mouthful. Um, the Boulder History Museum has been bringing the past back to life since 1987, but over the past three years, our history has been celebrated on the ski slopes. News team's Alex Rotman reports on a groovy day at Eldora. If you just so happen to be skiing at Eldora Mountain on Saturday, you probably didn't think you were going to be stepping back in time as the Boulder History Museum hosted their third annual retro ski day. Skiers were able to drop their traditional ski wear and get funky and even a little groovy as the 60s and 70s were brought back to life. All the excitement even brought Disco Rotman out to party. The event wasn't a fundraiser or any type of benefit, but Laura Stroud explains the true reason of Retro Ski Day. The Boulder History Museum has partnered with Eldora Mountain Resort uh, to get the word out about the museum and also just to offer the Boulder community a big party, a place to come and celebrate our history, um, our awesome retro stories, and give away a lot of prizes. By getting the word out, the Boulder History Museum did it their way, the history way. And what else but a little funky chicken, costume contests, prize giveaways, and looking as funkadelic as possible. People were excited to bring back the past. Well, I don't know. It's, I think basically I come up here for my uh, my kids' uh, uh, ski lessons, but today just happened to be a retro day, and uh, I come out and bring up my old garb and feel at home. The day was about raising awareness for the museum and our culture, but really today. just about having fun. You know, I want people just to have such a great time, let loose a little bit, enjoy this beautiful Colorado place, this beautiful Boulder place, maybe win some prizes from the Boulder History Museum, and hopefully remember that the Boulder History Museum is here. It's an active part of our community, and come back and visit us some other time. Peace, love, and the Boulder History Museum. A great mix for a psychedelic time. Alex Rotman, News Team Boulder. The Boulder History Museum saw the biggest turnout they have ever seen at the Retro Ski Day and hope the tradition stays alive next year as they do it all over again. Some athletes do not have the time to go to school and compete in club or varsity athletics, yet the burn to compete is not lost. The answer is intramural sports. I went down to the CU Rec Center to see what was the motivation for being so competitive over just a t-shirt. Intramural ice hockey is a way for CU students to get out and play competitive athletics. There's three leagues and each team probably has like uh, from anywhere to 10 to 15 kids, so it's probably upwards of 200 people. Because it is a less expensive way to play hockey, many students are attracted. Ring space is really expensive, so this is pretty much the only opportunity they have. There's some drop in hockey, but this is where most of the people who don't play club or don't play drop in come out to play. The cool thing about intramural, especially with our team, is um, you know, it's the same group of guys we've been playing. A lot of us have been playing together for two, three years right now. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's not as competitive, but it's starting to get that feel of competitive hockey again. With so many teams, tempers can fly, so the referees try to keep things safe and fun. You know, sometimes these kids get out of control and they need to feel shame sometimes, so we send them to the box. Sit in the box for a couple of minutes, they learn their lesson, they come out. Every competitive athlete wants to win a prize. For CU Intramurals, that prize is a t-shirt. We're uh, playing for the coveted CU uh, intramural t-shirts. They don't give us trophies. Uh, you know, we don't have parades or anything, but you get to wear your shirts to class in the morning and um, in front of all your friends. Uh, so I know, at least for me, it's a pretty personal thing. I've got a roommate who's been trying to get one for a long time now. Uh, Phil Milani, I think some people have heard of him. I don't know. He's kind of small time. It's a t-shirt. Yeah, that's all that matters. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to wear around. Something that... I heard this year they're actually kind of cool. From the CU Rec Center, Russell Cunningham, CU Sports Mag. Coming up later, we have the trivia question, so stay tuned. Would you give a cigarette to your unborn child? You do. 
every time you smoke while you're pregnant. Pregnant mothers, please, don't smoke. So, um, earlier in the show, we were stumped about everyone... Uh, we stumped everyone with a trivia question. <laughs> Even <laughs> us. Yeah. Um, so after letting the anticipation build, we are now ready to reveal the answer. But first, a quick refresher. The first CU athlete ever inducted into the Hall of Fame, Byron Wizzer White, who led the Buffs to an 8-0 record in 1937, is a famous alumni for what other reason? It turns out that Byron White was also a Supreme Court justice who served from 1962 to 1993. White set national records with a Rhodes Scholar, a two-time All-Pro halfback, leading, and a leading graduate at Yale Law School. During his service on the Supreme Court, he was appointed by John F. Kennedy and wrote 994 opinions. It is now time for March Madness again, but you, did you know that NCAA lacrosse tournament actually draws more fans than the Final Four? Sports Mag's Kelly Summeriba takes us and tells us more about often forgotten game of lacrosse. Sports we're familiar with, but there's others get up, get up. that most people don't even know about. Lacrosse started as a Native American method to train warriors, and it didn't make its Western debut until some 300 years later in 1856 in Montreal, Canada. But recently, the sport has spread out west to places like Boulder High. Lacrosse is becoming bigger for the state, and uh, the guys are you know, starting to feel the momentum of the sport and are starting to take it on at a younger age and um, pick it up and, uh, and really do well at it. Head coach Matt Kelly played collegiately at Fairfield University and has been training warriors of his own at Boulder High for the past eight seasons. When you're a player you learn kind of one aspect of the game but then you start coaching and, and you learn that you really have to pick up uh, all aspects of the game and teach these guys to be good men. One of coach Kelly's key phrases is it takes no talent to give effort. But there's another part of the game that you can't practice either. That internal burning desire you know, if they, can, if they can learn to develop whatever that passion is in, in whatever way, you know, and, and put it out on the field, that's great. And that's what separates the boys from the men, no matter what sport you play. For CU Sports Mag, I'm Kelly Samariva. Gymnasts from the Colorado Athletic Training School, CATS, represented Boulder at the USA Gymnastics Regional Meet hosted by Gymnastics Unlimited in North Glen. Level 4, 5, and 6 boys, ranging in age... Um, 7 to 11 competed in the six classic gymnastics events, including rings, parallel bars, vault, floor, high bar, and pommel horse. Competitive boys' gymnastics is growing rapidly. These boys train seriously, and for some young athletes, the USA Gymnastics meets are the path to the Olympics. Um, as far as the competition went, I think the boys had a great meet. Um, we started off with our warm-ups, basically doing a one-touch. They jumped up, hit really uh, great sets right off the bat, and uh, we went around. We did traditional format today, so they do all their six events uh, for boys' gymnastics, and then they um, compete them. For level, our level five, our highest score today was Casey Reese. Uh, Casey, uh, um, how'd it go today? It went good, and yeah. Which event did you do the best in? A uh, vault. Vault. And can you show us your medal there? Cool, man. And uh, right. looks like that's all we have yeah, for the show today. All the time we have, but uh, definitely stay tuned for next week. And for Kelly, uh, for Heather Morva, I'm Russell Cunningham, and we'll see you guys later. That's it, <laughs> Kelly, Heather. <laughs>
a strike. 